Andy, I need you to step out by yourself. Come over here to the back side of my car. Oh, Lord. Come here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I go in his pocket with my fingers, with my two fingers, and I get his money and I get out. The tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. When he said he would me up, I snapped. I completely snapped. With the bottle in your hand? Yes. I know he got 60, 60 staples in his face, chest, and arms. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also, sweetie. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. I'm like starstruck. Oh, thank you. Yes, because I've been watching your content now like crazy, and you are oh. such a joy. And oh, I'm just thank you. so happy to be here with you. Oh, thank you. You got the yes. setup like your little home, huh? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Show me around the boudoir. Uh, you want to take your shoes? Out? Yes, of course. Thank of course. You, this is my little room. How long have you been here for? Almost a year. And you're paying weekly or monthly or what are you paying? Um, if I make enough money on TikTok, then I pay weekly. Is it expensive? Uh, it can be. But you get a deal if you do weekly instead of nightly. Is that why you do it like that? Yes, uh, because um, weekly is cheaper. Um, and I book through the apps. The hotel.com and booking.com is way cheaper like that. <laughs> Where were you from originally? I'm originally from Stewart, Florida. I come from a, a dysfunctional background. My mom was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. My dad was very abusive towards my mother. I watched my mom get stuck in her head by my father. How old are you when you saw this happen? I was about seven or eight years old. He bust through the window of our house where we stayed at uh, with him. And he they're in her head with a butcher knife. Because mm. they were in a fight or something? No, he was just he was just abusive. Do you remember what your thoughts were at that age seeing that? Traumatic, just horrible. I mean, I don't know if it was his, his upbringing that caused him to do the things he was doing. He was a serial cheater. Um, he was abused, but he always told he always told us he loved us, and I just couldn't understand if you loved us, why would you treat us like this? How can a father treat his his wife and his children like this? You know, and still say you love us? You know, at seven years old, it's a really mature way of looking at it because I think a lot of kids that see that happen start to learn that love looks like that. Right. And that was my way of looking at love. Just growing up in life, it was just, you know, me always getting into toxic relationships with guys inside of the penal system. I just always thought that was love. Look how much you love him. Mm, you can see it in your eyes. Yes, it's my baby. You have a little kitchen set up too, right? Yes, I have a little pot. I cook right here. I watch him your cooking videos. Like, I saw you eating these eggs, but you're like, I don't eat the yolks. I don't eat the yogurt at all, but when I tell you these pickle eggs are so good. Mmm! How are you talking about these? Yes, yes, those. Yes. Carolina Reaper, and you love them, huh? Yes, they are so hot. OMG. My mom actually gave my aunt custody of me because I started being rebellious. And that's when I got into the fast lane of literally going out into the streets, working the streets. Let's go into that a little bit if you don't mind. I started shooting at the age of 12. My auntie them knew them and she's obviously, I want you to meet some people down here. And uh, that's okay, no problem. When my aunt introduced me to them, that's what they was doing. That's what they told me they was doing out there. So I just, I, you know, I just, Started hanging out in the streets, and that's what I got into. Did your aunt know that you were introducing that, introducing you to that world? They, my aunt didn't know at first um, until I finally told her what was going on. I was going to school in the daytime and, and working the streets at night. What was that like for you? Scary, but exhilarating at the same time. I guess I never knew what type of trick out, what type of trick car I would get into. So it was like mm, scary. But also, it was just an adrenaline rush knowing that I could captivate a man with my identity of 
him thinking that I was a girl. The adrenaline rush I got from him was just overwhelming. Did you know at that age that you were much too young to be doing that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Was there someone there to teach you the ropes of safety, or were you just kind of literally out on your own um, doing your thing? Yes, I used to actually. Uh, I used to actually get in cars with them. They used to show me, you know, well, girl, you got to do it like this, do it like that, do it like this. Um, let me just get our money. I'm actually 5'3", I'm tiny. Most trans girls you see, they're normally big size girls and stuff like that. So, I mean, I was just really easy passable. Just putting on a wig and putting on some lipstick and it's going on about my way. So it was no, okay, well, can I feel your uh, Let me see your cat and stuff. It was none of that. Did the Johns know or the Tricks know that you were 12 years old? They did not know. Wearing wigs back then just made you look older. How'd you pick your prices back then? I was more of a thief. Mm -hmm. If I actually had to suck a John off, um, I did it to go into their pockets. Cause the girls I worked with, they were thieves. They wasn't the type of girls that actually laid down to get their money. They wasn't those type of girls. They were girls that was pickpockets, known to jump in a car, go in the pockets, stand on the outside of a car, go in the pockets, get the money, and dash, make a dash for it. Is that a thing where it's like the girls get in the car and the guy's under the impression that things are going to go down, but before things even go down, they're getting robbed? Right. Okay, a trick say, okay, um, I want a job. Okay, how much you have to offer? Trick say, okay, I got $50. Okay, let me in the car. Um, I get in the car, he give me the 50. Okay, I play with his and I go in his pocket with my fingers, with my two fingers. And I get his money and I get out. The tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. I went to prison for 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, I did 15 years. Are you willing to talk about what happened that got you in prison for 15 yeah, years? Yeah, of course. I actually had just came home from prison. I was only out of prison 25 days. Me and my friend Angel, we went out. We found the trick. We got in his car. He wanted some crack. So me and my friend, we used to... I parlay the trick. If the trick wanted some crack, okay, what I do, I go get the, I go get the crack for him. I get my half, give him his half, once he once he smoked all his, I take the I got it in my mouth, and I sell him the back to him. I was the type of I'm a hustler, so if I can't get all your money by going in your pockets or getting your wallet, okay. My other option is I know you're a smoker, so I'm gonna get your money like this. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hold my mother in my mouth, and then resell it. To and him. resell it to the trick. Would he be like, oh, I thought you took that? No. He didn't care. Mm, mm, mm. He gonna he gonna pay for them drugs, cause that's what he wanted. He wanted to get high. My friend said, "Girl, he keep a lot of money, so let's go ahead and do our big one and get his money." So I said, "Girl, you know I'm down with that. I'm, you know, it's whatever. Let's get this money." We sitting in the truck. I go through the truck. He got the money in his wallet. So I'm playing with his little. I'm playing with his little dick. So I said, girl, I said, girl, I don't got the money, girl. I don't got the money. She said, girl, uh -uh, no, uh, uh girl, just keep the money, just hold the money. We we finna work him. So we working the trick, we working, we smoking this crack and everything. So he said he need to go to the bank and get some more money. So he don't know his his wallet is gone yet. So he looking for the wallet. I said, oh, baby, so you ain't got no more money. He said, no, I ain't got no. I don't lost my fucking wallet. I said, how in the fuck you don't lost your wallet? At this point, he don't have no more money, so I'm getting out of the van. I get out of his van and I walk. So she getting out of the van now, and she walking behind me. She said, well, come on, girl, let's split the money. So we split the money, and we, I go to her house, and we sitting in her house hanging out. I said, girl, I'm hungry. So I was dating this little guy, and um, I called him. I said, um, come over here. I said, I'm, gonna, I'm at Angel House. As we approaching the bar, the guy approached me, and he said, you got some thick legs. I said, oh, thank you. Then he said, can I have a light off your cigarette? I said, I will give you a light. I think it was a Friday to Saturday, and it was a lot of people out in the hood that knew me, but the guy didn't know me. He said, um, what's your name? I said, I tell him my name. I said, sir, okay, you can go on about your business. So he said, um, what are you? Are you a man or a woman? I said, doesn't matter what I am. I'm not going home with you. This is my boyfriend right here. So why are you why why are you questioning me about my um my gender? It doesn't matter. Everybody is laughing because they see him trolling me. They see him following me. I just get out of it. I said, just get the fuck out of my face. Just leave me the fuck alone. Why are you following me around? I'm not going home with you. Just leave me the fuck alone. As I said that, the people in the hood that was at the bar, they know who I was, but he don't know who I was, so they study laughing. So he asked the lady, and she said, why y'all fucking laughing at me? 
So the girl in the truck don't say nothing. Because they know who I am. They know he approaching a, 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 a tree. So he said, oh, you a mother your man, this and that and the other. Your mama should have did this. Your mama should have did that. Your mama, oh, he said, I would. When he said he would me up, I snapped. I completely snapped. And what'd you do? I told my boyfriend to hold my bag. I went across the street. It was a Heineken bottle. And I actually broke the Heineken bottle. But I kept the neck of the Heineken bottle. And when I came back across the street, I just asked him through it, why are you f***ing with me? With the bottle in your hand? Yes. And um, I cut him. I, I gave him. I know he got 60, 60 staples in his face, chest, and arms. 60 staples? Staples, yes. In his face, chest, and arms. So you just went ham? I just, yeah, because don't threaten me. I'm not bothering you. I stand five foot three. I'm tiny. You're huge over me. I'm not gonna allow you. And you're drunk. You're intoxicated. So I don't know what you're capable of doing to me. Isn't life crazy how, like, if you didn't find yourself at that restaurant at that time with that man there, everything could have looked different? Everything would, but it was just a blessing in disguise because I think at that point, that was my turning point of me getting my life together. I think it was just God divine plan for me to go and sit in prison for 15 years. Are you sober in prison? Are you finding ways to get No, I'm sober, very clean. I actually had a, a deal in prison. He was my my husband. I actually got his name tattooed on my um, ass. Yeah. Uh, What's his was, name? His name was Albert. He's still on your ass right now? Mm -hmm. Uh, Albert's forever with you. Yes. Uh, he was a boy. Um, I used to hold his, and I never had the, the desire to get high or use in prison. It was almost like you knew, like this is my time for to change my life. I just knew I wanted better. Do you wish that it was more like five years and not fifteen years? No, because I don't regret the fifteen years. You feel like you really changed who you are as a woman. I think prison changed me as a person. At that point, I just knew right then that it it was just it was over for for me. I just I used to pray. I just ask God, Lord, just take this desire. I don't want to get back out of here doing the same thing over and over and over. I don't want that life no more. I know a lot on TikTok. You talk about your mom and your love for her. My mom was the epitome of a strong, black, southern woman. My mom was just, Lord have mercy, I just, my mom was my shero. I can't much put it no other way. She was just, she was just my shero. Like literally, she was just literally my shero. She just allowed me to be me. She didn't try to change me. She allowed her child to be her child. And I don't talk about my mom a lot because I'm just, I get very emotional about her. And I was actually on my way back to prison when my mom got killed. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Um. so it's just, I wasn't able to go to her funeral. There's no time in grieving. And that's just a part of grieving I have not actually got over. I try not to talk about it, but I need to talk more about it. Um, Cause I do tear up a lot when I talk about her. I know this is a, such a sensitive subject, so I don't want to pry too much. So if I'm asking questions you don't want to talk about, just please let me know. Mm -hmm. So you said she was killed. Yes. Was it by your father? No, it wasn't by my father. It was actually by NFL player sister. Really? What happened? Uh, he didn't run. They were driving? Yeah. So it was just an odd, it, one of those awful situations. Yeah. Um, she was walking across the street, and the NFL player's sister hit her <gasps> and killed her, left her in the streets for dead. And how did you find out? Someone told me to call home. I was in jail. I was facing, I think I was facing three years in prison. And some told me to say, call home. I just felt something was wrong. When I called home, I asked my aunt, I asked my aunt, I asked my aunt, where was my mother? And she said, oh, um, call your other aunt. She'll tell you what's going on with your mom. Like, why can't you tell me what's going on with my mom? You my aunt. You her sister. Why can't you tell me? She said, oh, call your other aunt. She'll tell you. So you knew right then. Uh-oh. So I called my other aunt, and my other aunt told me what happened. I just went ballistic. Like, I just knew something was wrong because it's just like, I mean, you just get this feeling. This person just took my whole fucking life away. Like, my whole life. And me, like, if you saw me, like, you saw me, you saw my mama. How can somebody just be so ruthless and so careless to leave somebody's mother in the fucking road 
and just keep going. Just leave her in the road to die. You don't stop and help her. You don't stop to aid her in no kind of way. How? So you say you haven't really worked through this trauma with your mom, right? I haven't. It's just a grieving process. I haven't gotten. I haven't gotten over. You know, and it's been. She got in 1992. So it's just. I mean, my mom was just close. Like we just had a bond out of this fucking world. I mean, I, I thankfully have not had a parent that passed, but I could imagine that the grieving process might never end. It is something I don't think I would ever get over. I mean, this lady was dysfunctional, as fuck, but this lady wasn't, she wasn't mean spirit. She was loving, she was caring, she was so kind to others. How in the fuck you stand so strong and so, so tall through all it is and still be the lady that you are today. But she is within you because that's your story too. Everything you've been through and the joy that you still, and the love that you still have within you, like your mom is inside of you. Yes, and it's just, and you, know, I, you know, I'm so thankful to to know that this lady birthed me, she gave me life. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just thankful because it's just, I mean, it's not a single day. I don't, I don't give thanks to this lady. Um, and God of uh, this actually allowed me to have this type of mother. I'm sure that your mom is so proud of you looking at you now and seeing the how far you've come and what you're doing now, reaching hundreds of thousands of people with your TikToks and inspiring so many people and using your story to change the lives of others. You know, I always say, how did God pick me to become somebody on social media, to get on social media and tell my story? Me? Little me is is great. It's mind blowing. It's it's overwhelming. It's precious. It's timeless. It's meant to be. It's, yeah. It was part of your destiny. Yeah, and I thank God every day for it. I'm so thankful and grateful. And we're so thankful for you. Oh, thank you so very much. I'm just I'm I'm grateful. I'm I'm so thankful for it because. I want people to always know that no matter what your situation and circumstance is, don't never allow your trauma to hold you back from your destiny because you can always overcome your trauma. Beautifully said. So you are making money on TikTok now, right? I do battles. That's how you make money on TikTok. You do battles. And that's how you're affording this hotel room. Yes. Yes, but you know, I haven't been on it because now I'm trying to find me a job because the battles, you know, life is really life for some people. And I know a lot of people don't have it to come on there to actually give, to donate, you know, with gifts and stuff like that. So um, I'm looking for a job. I'm in the process now of looking for jobs, but I have a up criminal record. So here in Florida, they always want to know about your criminal, your criminal background. I was just actually denied a job. I think it was Wednesday to Thursday. Um, it was a work from home job. And it's so sad because I, you know, that's not the person that I am today. Everyone deserves a second chance. That's what's wrong with the world today. They do not give people second chances. I'm one of the people that, the person that I was in 2001, I am not that person today. Like why can't people just understand that Everybody changes. Everybody changes. And it's also hard to get a job as a trans woman in Florida because of the governor. That's a great conversation to get into. The fact of living in Florida and, you know, with everything going on with the government here and stuff, they don't support trans people. They don't. And so a lot of trans women are left to fend for themselves and they find themselves doing illegal activities because they need a roof over their heads and then they get in trouble for that. Yes, most definitely. And I'm born and raised here in Florida. It has become the worst state ever because the governor. I want a better life, you know? I don't want to stay stagnated in a situation that I know I can overcome. I pray to overcome. You know, I don't want to keep running back to the streets doing fraud and stealing and selling. I don't want that. Thank you so much for today and for just being, letting me be in your presence. And you are so strong and open hearted and 
just what you've persevered, but to still have like the joy in your eyes and in your heart. It's it like it really it really moves me so so much. Oh, thank you so very much, Matt. Thank you so very much. Thank you. It was so lovely meeting you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm never gonna forget you. Yeah, honestly. thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. I got you something. Oh. Uh, oh, let me get it. Oh, hold on. Uh, I know how much you like Michael Kors. Uh, so you open it up. Uh, I hope you like it. Oh, thank you, baby. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you. You like it? Yes, thank you. When you said that you named your dog Michael thank Kors, you. I was thank like, okay, you. I need to get her something Michael Kors. Oh, thank you. And I think this, I could totally see you rocking this one. Oh, thank you so very much, sweetie. Yes, I hope you like it. Thank you so much. You're very much welcome. I have so much love for you. Oh, thank you, yes. sweetie. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. It's a, a blessing. I feel like you you made my trip. So thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you so very much, sweetheart. Have a good rest of the day, okay? Same to you, sweetheart. Goodbye, I'm okay. I love you, baby. Aww. Okay. Thank you. You're okay. very much welcome, sweetie. Alright, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Yes, and you be safe. Alright, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>